inside the complex US F-35 engine manufacturing. Today, let's take a look and visit one of the most incredible places on the planet, the Lockheed Martin F-35 factory in Fort Worth. In the 1950s, as aircraft started to transition from propellered engines to jet engines, so did the aero engine manufacturers competed head-to-head -to, -head to meet this crucial need, with Pratt and Whitney among the most successful. Headquartered in East Hartford, Connecticut, the company has been manufacturing engines for civilian and military vehicles since 1925. From piston engines to turbojet and even rocket propulsion, the company has flourished with the aerospace industry from its foundation to this new one age of propulsion systems, what you see in aircraft more integrated, and there is no better example of this than the propulsion system of Pratt & Whitney's engines have been utilized in some of the U.S. Air Force's most famous and valuable aircraft, including the F-35 Lightning the latest generation U.S. fighter jets that depend on a specially designed Pratt & Whitney engine for propulsion. It employs a custom F-135 low-bypass augmented turbofan engine, which weighs 40,000 pounds of thrust. The F-135 engine creation line is one of the most remarkable marvels of modern engineering. It's a blend of automated work instructions, precise machining, laser ultrasonic testing, automated drilling and laser projection. Rolled together. Produced in Lonsdale, Canada and in Poland. But the final assembly happens in Middletown, Connecticut in the US, where Pratt & Whitney took a step further in engine technology in 2014 by switching from the vertical to the horizontal mounting system. This concept was trialed at the company's branch in Canada, which powers the CS series of aircraft. For more benchmarking, the team of engineers took a trip to Europe to study the efficient R8 car horizontal engine model. Horizontal aircraft engine assembly autonomously eradicates all the tooling interface, which leads to greater productivity. The acceleration testing method is used to prove the reliability of the engine. This method is used to rapidly age an engine by causing it to gather a few years of runtime in a short span of time. Another aircraft that employs Pratt & Whitney's engine for propulsion is the C-17 Globemaster, a strategic airlift plane that has given heavy service since it first began operating in 1995. They utilize it in a very tough environment, and the engine delivers day after day. They take off from very short and unpaved runways. It has four Pratt & Whitney F-117 PW100 turbofan engines, homogenous to those used on commercial airliners. The F-117 engine is the revolutionary part of a C-17. It had the skill to fly in desert areas and had the possibility to airdrop at very low altitudes in very severe locations with terrible weather conditions. The B-52, another aircraft boasting the JT-3D and J-57 engines, developed essentially to handle nuclear weapons for Cold War-era deterrence missions. The ability to preserve fuel while flying was a vital part of their design. In fact, the B-52 is still the only aircraft in service with eight engines. The interior of the B-52 is still very innovative for its age. The Bombay doors open to show a nearly empty compartment which can be stored with any variety of bombs and other ammunition. Along with engine redundancy, Boeing was cautious to provide a plethora of interior system redundancies to guard against possible failures. For example, the B-52 boasts six engine-driven hydraulic pumps and four electric backup pumps, four generators, and two manual engine emergency landing gear extensions and retraction systems. Below the cockpit is a strategic mission area where two operators work to keep the aircraft on course while handling the aircraft's weapons. It was also armed with the defensive aerial tail gun designed as a potential nuclear response craft. It was crucial that the B-52 could get airborne rapidly. This led to the so-called cart start. To carry out this launch procedure, the flight crew along with the crew chief scrambled to the aircraft where they eliminated pre-flight check flags then into the craft. Explosive charges are then used to turn on the engines, which would usually take up to an hour to warm up. In most cases, a cart launch can then get the B-52 up and running in 10 minutes. 
Apart from the differences in engine types and unique starting methods, another significant difference is the engine placement. Many planes developed by Learjet, for example, have rear-mounted engines positioned near the tail on either side of the fuselage. The Boeing 727 is also recognized for the design, as is the Boeing 717, the CRJ200 and 1000, and the McDonnell Douglas Mid 8X series of jetliners. This is in stark contrast to the majority of the large commercial and military craft such as the B-52 and Boeing 747, which are equipped with underwing engines. Rear-mounted engines are perfect for protection against issues related to engine failure. If an engine were to stall mid-flight, the pilot would then have to deal with much less asymmetric thrust as the engines are so close to the centerline. When an underwing engine goes out, the ensuing yaw can make it hard for the pilot to maintain control. Unfortunately, rear-mounted engines are also incredibly loud for passengers near the rear of the plane. They also necessitate an elevator to be placed above them, resulting in a T-tail design. Whereas underwing engines are easier to maintain and don't produce the noise issues associated with their tail-mounted counterparts. This configuration also provides wing bending relief, which can decrease the weight of the wing structure and enable for an overall lighter plane. All in all, both designs have their advantages, but who knows the airplane of the future may depend on something different altogether.